Uh, thank you for having me here. As Rob said, my name is Lauren Vaccarello. I'm the VP of Marketing at Box. Um, this should be a really fun topic to talk about. It's uh, what we're calling the big one. We're launching your website. So to give you a little bit of background, let you know what we're going to talk about for the next 25, 30 minutes. I'm going to run through some background information, give you some history on what uh, the Box.com website was. We're going to go through 11 tips for launching or relaunching your, uh, your global website. I'm going to talk a little bit about how it all worked out, and I'm going to try to leave about five minutes so everyone here can um, really ask me anything. The things I really want everyone in this room to take away from this session are um, nobody's perfect. And one of the things that you'll always look at, and as a marketer, we tend to look around and say, this company does such amazing marketing. This company's website is perfect. And we tend to hold um, people and companies on pedestals. And what I really want everyone to take away is none of us are perfect. You never have enough resources. Um, no website launch or marketing program are ever as, um, as flawless or impeccable as people think. So I really want this to be the time to sort of share our highlights and share what went really well and also give you some insights into what didn't go quite so well even on a, a website launch um, to the scale of a multi-billion dollar company. Um, so some background information. So consider this part of the presentation story time. Uh, so this really is the dirty laundry that we walked into that you probably won't have a lot of people share. So I've been at Box for about a year, and I get into the company, and you see a website that looks pretty much like this. It's not the prettiest website. The design's a little old. The copy isn't great. Box is a multi-product company. You really can't tell. So this is what I thought I walked into. And then a few months into being at the company, getting up and running, they say, hey, we think we want to relaunch the website. I take on the website as part of my job. And then I start to dig a little bit deeper. Um, and what I find out is the website, not actually just some uh, superficial changes. It turns out that when we had the website, we had no people with web experience in the marketing team. We had no one on SEO. We had no one doing web strategy. We had no web producers. We had no web designers. We had two designers on the product org that we could borrow that would actually help design the website. We also had the website was built on Drupal 7. The engineers working on the website did not know how to use Drupal 7 and were new to the platform. In addition to all of that, um, turns out the website was built on Drupal 7. The entire website was hard coded into blank text box by an agency that outsourced to another agency. So even though this is what my website looks like, it's basically 1999 and it would have been better if it was built in Dreamweaver. Um, so we said, all right. We've got to relaunch the website, so what do we do? So what did we actually tackle when we relaunched the website? Completely new site architecture. We ripped apart the entire information architecture and built the whole thing from the ground up. We are a multi-product company. We are an enterprise company. You couldn't tell that from our website, so we had to tackle that. We also know the, the rev cycle of Drupal, of Drupal. They're going to reiterate and release a new version every 12 to 24 months. We don't have that much more time left on Drupal 7, so let's migrate to Drupal 8. Um, the copy on the website, not super good. Let's rewrite all of the copy on a 120-page website. The design, not super hot either. Let's redo all of the design for the website. The messaging, that doesn't quite make sense anymore. Let's redo the messaging for the website. Also, when I say the box.com website, there's actually seven existing foreign language sites that all need to be included because you don't want a Frankenstein website with old site and new site. And then while we're at it, we also want to test going into three new markets. So let's throw on three new additional foreign language sites. So when I say we relaunched a corporate website, this is actually what we did. Super fun, right? This is absolutely the way you should launch a website. Um, I loved it. So what I'm going to do now, now that you have a little bit of background, we're all on the same page of what I'm talking about when I'm saying we relaunched the website. Um, let's talk about the 11 things that you actually need to know. 
whether you're doing a simple website relaunch or you're taking on a big, hairy challenge, you're relaunching an e-commerce website, here's some basics that we learned along the way um, and what will make your life a lot easier. The first thing you need to know when relaunching a website of any scale is know why you're doing this. Um, if you were doing this because of vanity, because you don't think the site's good enough, totally fine, just know that's the reason up front. Um, for us, why we relaunched the website had a few key reasons. First, if we wanted to update a logo on the website, we have, Box has 66,000 customers. We want to put new logos. We want to tell people who our customers are. To update a logo on the website took two weeks. You'd have to file a JIRA ticket, have to get someone in engineering to stop working on product, to jump in and to update the logo on the website. If you want to scale a business, this is not possible. Um, the website is the face of the company. It also is responsible for millions of dollars of revenue for the business. And we need this to be better. We need this to be a bigger revenue contribution. So another big reason, also the whole marketing department learned how to do marketing away from the website and around the website versus using the website. So we said we need to make it easy for our marketing department to update content, we need to have a bigger revenue contribution, and we need a better experience for visitors to the website. So great, we know why we're gonna launch the website. Next thing, super simple, you really need to have clear goals, metrics, and timing when you're taking on a big project. Why are you doing this? How are you going to know if this is successful? So for us, we thought about timing. We're gonna kick off this project in January, and we want new front end, new back end, new design, new messaging. We don't really have a team. We don't have a copywriter. By the way, we want this done in three months. Um, I was able to negotiate us a five month window and we took on this task that was this impossible task. How are you really gonna rebuild basically 11 sites, front end, back end, design, content in five months and increase results for the website? So got everyone together and really approached this as, this is an impossible task, but we are gonna make this work. And one of the things we're going to do, really clearly defined and shared goals. The purpose of relaunching a website is not to relaunch a website. The purpose of relaunching a website is really about what are the end results, what are the contributions. For us, we thought about defined goals as increasing pipeline and revenue contribution by 30% within six months. So not only did we have to improve initial performance as defined by pipeline and revenue, but make sure we're set up for long-term improvements of the site. We also wanted a 10 percentage point reduction in bounce rate. Our bounce rate was too high, so what are we going to do to get people on the site more engaged? And finally, this idea of increase in user engagement. The reason there's not a hard metric on this one, we're actually looking at several different things. We're looking at time on site pages viewed, also key pages viewed on the website. Um, prior to launch, we didn't have a single piece of video content on the website. The old site architecture wouldn't let you embed video. We actually wanted to put video, get people to watch. We've got these incredible customer stories and customer usage. How do I make sure people are using this? Because we also have a big sales team, so how do we make sure the website becomes something that the sales organization can use? Um, to actually do this, this takes a ton of work and a pretty big team. So we ended up putting a group of people together to work on this. We had engineering, we got a couple of designers from the product team, we finally hired a copywriter. The project kicked off on January 1st, our copywriter who wrote every single piece of copy on the page started on January 3rd. She had seven days to learn about our products, our benefits, our features to be able to articulate this to the entire world. Um, we also knew we didn't have the right engineering resources and enough engineering resources, so we found an outsized outsourced Drupal development firm who put three uh, web developers, had them sit in our office and work to build with us because if you're gonna move fast, you need to make sure you're resourced properly. We didn't have a project manager, so we borrowed one from the sales organization. Great project manager on the sales team, jumped over into marketing and said, how can we help do this? This is gonna have a big impact on the business. Um, so we got this really disparate group of people together who'd frankly never worked together before but how are we gonna do this in a way that makes it work? You have to make sure everyone in the team is emotionally bought in. All of these people were told, 
you have to work on relaunching a website. They're doing this because their manager told them to do this, which would be fine if we were on any sort of reasonable timing. Um, if you want people to move faster than they thought possible, to really move mountains, they have to be emotionally bought in. And that's why I like to call this the power of why. What they were doing was relaunching the website. Why they were doing this is because the website is the face of any business. The most important thing every company has is going to be their website. Why they are doing this is this is gonna be growth for the business. This is how we accelerate growth rate. This is how share price goes up. This is the most meaningful thing that they can do. So we explain to everybody not only why are we doing this, what are the goals, what are the revenue contributions, and how does everyone's work do that? If we have somebody working on a design for the website, we wanted to make sure he didn't see this as, I'm just making designs, I'm just trying to you know, make a pretty web page. The reason he is doing this, the reason he was working on designs, was to get more people engaged with the content, to get more people interested, to better explain our products and services, so more people will come back, more people will buy, and ultimately, what we are enabling our customers to do is to truly change the, their business, their industry, and in some ways, some of our customers are actually changing the world because of their usage of our product. And we wanted to make sure every single person working on the website knew this is why we are doing this. Um, but it's not just about the people working on your team, it's really about the entire company. Um, so we got the entire company behind the project. Every single person in the company knew what we were doing, why we were doing it. From our DevOps team to our product team, the rest of engineering, our HR and recruiting teams knew what we were doing, why we were launching the website, and the impact that this would have on them and the rest of the business. Every single week, we would send out an update to the leadership team of the company, as well as key stakeholders to say, this is what's going on, are we on track, how are we doing, and if we need help because every single website relaunch, every single project, project is gonna hit a roadblock that your team may not be able to solve on their own. And by getting the whole company involved, anytime we hit a problem, someone in a different department was able to step up and remove a roadblock for us extremely quickly. And what's important to realize is almost all of these things happened before the relaunch even started getting people on board, setting goals, setting metrics, knowing why you're doing this, happens before you even start designing, before you start writing code, before you start writing copy. And other things that have to happen before you even get started is this idea of pre-work. Uh, if you want to move quickly, it's all that upfront work that's going to be the most important, most impactful things you can do. For us, it was how do we define the information architecture of the website? We are ripping and replacing everything. We can't do this on the fly. What's the information architecture? What does the site map really look like? What are our wireframes? How are we looking to build? Who are, who's supposed to come to the website? Who are our buyer personas? What's our overall content strategy? What are the technical decisions we need to make? What's our hosting platform? Are we gonna host internally or externally? Are we going to use Drupal 7 or Drupal 8? Figure out all of these decisions before you even start working, because I can tell you right now, there's nothing worse than working on content and building it out and then finding out you're writing for the wrong buyer or you're killing half of the pages you thought you were building. So this upfront work is going to save you a ton of time in the long term. Uh, the most important thing that I can tell everybody if you only remember one thing about what you're gonna do when you're doing a mass site relaunch is to decouple front-end changes from back-end changes. So let me tell you what I mean. So your front-end, super easy. If any of your stakeholders, an executive, someone who doesn't work in marketing, thinks about website changes, they think about what they can see. They think about the words on the page, they think about the design, and those are gonna be all of your front-end changes. But on the back-end, you have hosting platforms and CMS systems for us because our product, you log into our product through the website, there's the relationship between the product and then also the website. There's all of these things on the back end, all of these infrastructure decisions, load balancing that have to get made. Your CEO is never going to ask you about load balancing, they're gonna ask you about design. 
Um, so when you're working on a website relaunch, rip apart front end changes from back end changes. If you do front end from back end, front end and back end at the same time, it will be the most painful experience you're ever going to have. The reason I say that is because we did it all at once. And I wouldn't ever recommend doing front end and back end at the same time. Uh, the things that you'll start to see is once you redo all of your back end, the reason you want to break it apart so you can update design, you can update content management, and you can do all this with the same look and feel, the same words, and you could start to figure out the things you don't know. Um, when you do it at the same time, you're going to be um, doing a lot of work in parallel, and it may end up causing a lot of duplicate work. One of the biggest lessons learned that we had was um, how do you co-locate different teams? I, it'll be rare that every single person working on a website will actually work on the exact same team. Um, for us to give you an example, our engineers sat on the third floor. Our designers sat on the other side of the third floor. Our copywriters sat on the sixth floor. Our product marketers sat on another corner of the sixth floor. Our project manager for the website sat in sales on the fifth floor. So we are literally as far apart as a global web team as we can be and still be in the same office. Um, some of the issues with that is we're meeting once a week to check in. So everything moves in this very, very waterfall process. By putting people in the same room with shared goals, they're going to start to be able to move a lot faster and get a lot more done. And there's a ton of focus right now on what people can do to having a disparate workforce or having people and remote workers and people working all over the world. If you have a really complicated project with a lot of different people, a lot of different teams, a lot of different stakeholders, it is 99% of the time going to be easier if you can physically put people together so when they have a question, they can just lean over and ask somebody. Slack helps a lot, but there's a lot to be said for co-location. Um, start thinking about what you're, what you're doing when you're rolling out pages and how you can test a few pages and iterate. It's going to be extremely tempting to say, we're going to roll out everything really, really quickly. We know copy. We know design. Um, we know everything that we're going to do, and we are going to mass produce pages. Um, think about what you can do to actually build a couple of pages, test out the build process, test out what copy and design and build looks like together, and start to iterate. Um, what you shouldn't do is a mass page build before you work through any bugs. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about, obviously, what we did, and a lot of these lessons learned are through doing it the way you shouldn't. Um, as we started to build the website, because we were building everything in parallel, we had engineering working on replatforming and re-architecting and everything in the background. Then we also had to hit this incredibly aggressive deadline and 120 pages of content that is going to have to get rolled out across 11 sites and only nine languages across the 11 sites, including some languages that we've never used before, we had to do a lot in parallel. So we had the engineers sitting over here working on infrastructure, working on replatforming, working on building templates and modules. We had the design team sitting over here saying, how do I build a really, really fast modular system? How do I build design principles? What are all the modules that I need to build? And then we had the copywriter sitting over here saying, I'm going to use module 7, 5, and 12 on this page. I can fit this much copy. I'm going to start writing out all of the copy. And here's an outline, and here's the messaging that I need that's in an Excel sheet. And I'm going to take that and translate it to a box note and start writing through all of these different pieces of content. So what can go wrong? We have designs sitting over here, building out designs. We have copywriters, copywriter, writing 120 pages of copy. With vague, with vague character requirements that are going to sit in the designs that are over here. And then we have our engineering team building everything based on some basic principles. So what can go wrong? We got copy approved. We got design approved. We got engineering approved. But what we ended up getting on the initial build, when we go to sit down, and we had five of us sitting together, and we are going to create 120 web pages in an eight-hour marketing hackathon, and we are going to sit and build everything out in mass. It's going to be easy. We've got the team. We had a bunch of bourbon. It'll be fantastic. I had a lot of bourbon. It was a really fun night. Um, 
So this is what we ended up getting. Um, has anyone here ever been on a safari? This is my random safari story for anyone here. You guys will understand what this means. Um, so when you go on safari, a lot of it's like driving around looking for animals, and the drivers are very, very funny. Um, and the running joke when you're on a safari is every time you see this animal, which is a wildebeest, they say, hey guys, it's a wildebeest. This is what design by committee looks like. And then everyone laughs. And we're like, well, what do you mean? He's like, well, think about it. A bunch of people got together and they said, I want this animal that's really fast, so I'm going to give it legs like a horse. And I want it to you know, be able to avoid predators, so it needs some sort of camouflage. Zebras have that, so we're going to give it stripes like a zebra. And it needs to be mean and angry, and it's going to have to have big horns. So we're going to give it horns, and we're going to make it look like a ram. And then you put it all together, and you get the ugliest animal in the safari or in the bush, which was the wildebeest. Every single piece in isolation makes perfect sense. You put it together, and you get the ugliest animal in um, Africa that becomes the running joke on every trip. So this is what we ended up getting with our first launch. And we had five of us sit and build 120 web pages in this eight-hour hackathon. We were so proud of ourselves. We put it all together and went, shit, this looks terrible. I, and we talked to, uh, actually, hopefully she'll never see this, um, the product marketer who spent so much time on this came back and said, but how are we going to get copy reapproved? All of this got approved. This is what we have to do. And we're like, I'm never going to let this website see the light of day. This is the worst looking thing I've ever seen. So what did we do? This is actually when we took the different team and said, there is no more silo. We are locking everyone in a room for the next 30 days, and we are turning this whole website around. Um, so we ended up rebuilding the same pages all over and went through piece by piece and said, what matters? How are we going to do this? And there is no more design does this and copy does this. You're going to sit next to each other and rebuild and update every single page on this website until it's something we are happy with. And after a lot of bourbon and me breaking, making a lot of people very unhappy by doing that, um, we finally got a website we were happy with. So great, we have this website we're happy with. Let's go do this. Let's just flip this on. Awesome, we're done. We're not going to do this because we have to go back to the original goals of the website. What are we going to do to increase revenue from this website? The success metric is not done and will never be done. So we're going to torture the dozen people and not let them out of the room until we're done. So we have a very slow, methodical rollout. Um, for the most part, when you roll out websites, it's always been, let's do a 50-50 split test. I don't think that's enough anymore. And honestly, the stakes are way too high. This is a massive corporate website. If I fuck this up, sorry, I'm not supposed to say that. Um, if I mess this up, this is a material revenue impact on the business, and I like my job. So we did a 1, 10, 25, 50. Uh, the first three days, we rolled everything out at 1%. Whole purpose is, can we check for bugs? Did we mess up a lead issue? Is a page not working? Are we throwing up a 404? We QA'd everything, but you don't know what you don't know. So for the first three days, we just bug checked, and the best way to bug check is with real traffic. Things looked good. We made a couple of changes. Then we rolled it out to 10%. The reason we did 10% was to look for directional information. Does anything start to look weird? It's not going to be statistically significant, but it's going to let you see hot spots. And for us, it let us see a couple of hot spots of our pricing page doesn't look right directionally. Let's pull up the old page and the new page, pull out the data, and start to do more qualitative comparison. Let's get this in front of a few customers and figure out why we think the performance is starting to look directionally off, and let's course correct really quickly. Then we rolled it out to 25% of our traffic. This is really for how do I get more data, how do I identify more hotspots, and how do I adapt quickly? make any changes before I do a real split test at 50%. And what was super weird at 25% is all of a sudden our bounce rate was like 80%. And the entire team was crushed because we spent four months killing ourselves to build the worst website in the world. We have an 80% bounce rate. What the hell is wrong with us? And 
I have to be the bearer of bad news and tell everyone that, you know, what did we do? And we're sitting there going, this doesn't make any sense. We shouldn't be at an 80% bounce rate. This doesn't make any sense. Um, make sure you're looking at the right data set. That's super helpful. Because when things logically don't make any sense, it probably is because it doesn't make any sense. Um, if, you're a, a, if you're working for a SaaS company, you log into your product from your website. At least we log into our product from our website. So when we pull data, we have to pull out any product logins. Because that's not really a bounce that someone using our product. And our analytics team is phenomenal. And for our core data, we did that. And we forgot to pull out customer logins. Um, so it turns out we didn't build the worst website in the world. Turns out performance was actually better. The positive of looking at the wrong data set was a couple of things that would have taken a little longer to fix. The sense of urgency to fix the home page and get a home page that was tighter got amplified about 10x. So that got changed really well. So after three days of everyone feeling miserable about themselves, we realized we're actually good at our jobs. <laughs> Rolled it out to 50%. Um, performance improved. Initial signs for leads and pipeline and revenue started to go up. So that was awesome. And then we said, OK, now we have to flip, out, flip on international. We tested the US first. Now we have to roll out international. Um, don't underestimate the workload behind an international rollout. We had a, a tool called Lingo Tech, which helps you automate a lot of it. Um, the QA process across nine foreign languages and the actual physical rollout of nine foreign languages is going to be 10 times as much work than you could possibly imagine. Don't forget that piece. Um, we did to a degree. We also thought we could gradually roll out international. Uh, even if your um, external hosting company tells you you can have part of the site on Drupal 7 and part of the site on Drupal 8, when it comes to actually rolling it out, not true. Um, everything has to be on the same. Um, everything has to be on the same version. Uh, so we sped up international rollout and got that done in a week instead of six weeks, which was super fun for everybody. Um, my team works a lot. Uh, they took vacation after. Um, finally, the last thing I could tell everybody is the launch of your new website. Once your website's live, think of it as day one. Having a new website's amazing. You've got good performance. We had a bunch of, we actually drank a bunch of bourbon. We were very excited to launch the new website. You can tell what I do with my time at work a lot. Um, this is the first day. The, new, the launch of the website was literally the first day of having a website. Now it is, what is our constant plan to test, to improve, to make this better every single day? And there's going to be great content coming up in the next two days about ways to continuously improve the website. But this is probably my biggest takeaway. Uh, so super, super quick run-throughs of everything. Um, just know why you're relaunching a website. Make sure you get buy-in from the team, from the company. It'll make uh, getting through hurdles and asking people to do more than they ever thought they could a hell of a lot easier. Um, decouple your front end from your back end, really. I know everyone's going to force you to do it all at once. It'll be the worst experience you can possibly have. Just split it apart and say no. Um, methodically roll out your website. It's, you don't know what you don't know until you roll it out in small batches. And just keep making it better. Um, we have like 90 seconds for questions. I'm going to stop talking. Hopefully, this was helpful for everybody. And uh, thank you. My name is Lauren. <laughs> Literally 90 seconds. That's great. Uh, OK. <laughs> um, one thing we had a few questions about was the uh, decoupling the front end yes. and the back end. Uh, how do you decide? Which of those to tackle first? What's the, uh, what's the plan for that? Oh, great question. Um, so front end, back end. Uh, back end first. The, even if you know you're not going to keep your copy, you know you're not going to keep your design, it is a lot easier to fix all of the back end with the same design, the same copy. People will say, but you're going to do throwaway work. You have to build modules for things you're not going to use. It will end up saving you a lot of time because for us, we found things like padding and spacing issues that don't seem like that big of a deal. But across 120 pages, padding and spacing issues are going to be the biggest pain you could possibly have to deal with, especially if you have uh, people that you work for that care a lot about Pixel Perfect. Um, so pull your back end first. Clean up all of your back end. It is not throwaway work. 
and then build the front end on top, your back end will be a lot stronger. When you talk about the, uh, the testing and uh, some of the page identification beforehand, um, tell me about some of the process of, uh, of user testing or the, uh, the processes and the tools you ran through to awesome. do that. Um, so we actually did a fair amount of user, te user testing as well, especially when we <laughs> initially launched the Will Device of a website. Um, we looked at usertesting.com to do things at scale, so to figure out what are the things that looked a little off. We also had a, an external user experience consultant come in and help us look at everything. Um, even if you were great at user experience and this is what you, you do for a living, if you were looking at the website nonstop for four months, you lose perspective. So we brought in, so we use usertesting.com, we brought in an external consultant and we also have a customer advisory board or a few different customer advisory boards. So we called up some friendly customers, put the new website in front of them and then asked for very, very honest feedback. Um, in terms of testing tools, fun story, uh, over, a week, over one weekend one of our engineers built an A-B testing tool it was great. Um, so we, they wanted us to use that for the initial launch. Um, could not do anything complicated. We're on Optimizely now and absolutely love it. You can do a lot more. And coincidentally, a company who specializes in testing can build a tool a lot better than an internal engineer in a weekend. Uh, someone asked a question about the, uh, the timeline on those 1%, 5%, 10% yep. tests. So the 1% test ran for three days? 1% was three days. 10% was actually about three days for the initial direction. It took us another two days to make some changes. 25% was about five business days. And then 50% ran until six, signif statistical significance, which for us was another five business days. That's cool. Uh, with the, um, uh, I was going to say, with the international and the yeah. U.S., uh, you did international rollout first. Is that uh, right? We did uh, U.S. US first, first. Okay. and then all of the international. The thing to keep in mind with our international rollout was uh, U.K. was a full site, France was a full site, um, the other nine sites were maybe 30-page mini sites. Um, there's just no way you can keep up that scale of content. So we had a main. Uh, large site um, for our biggest markets and the easiest ones, and then sort of mini sites. What things were you looking for when you did the US rollout? We, was there anything yeah. you like, okay, we're gonna check to see if this happens, and then we'll know what to do next when we go international? Yes, um, so we identified key pages. So figure out what your most important pages are on the website and spend extra sort of time to understand what's happening. Uh, with the new site navigation, we wanted to see where people were going, how people were navigating the website. We also sanity checked that with um, more qualitative, more user, experience, uh, more user experience, and more actual people telling us what they were doing. Um, we looked at not just site bounce rate, but overall bounce rate and engagement on key pages, what they were doing, what hotspots there were. Um, it made the rollout for international a lot easier, with the exception of Japan, because um, Japanese is different, I think, for every single company, and it was a totally different business model. So that was literally doing this all over. Awesome. Well, congratulations with the, uh, the launch. Uh, let's give a big MozCon thank you to Lauren V. Thank you.